Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk about in long robes, to be greeted obsequiously in the market squares, to take the front seats in the synagogues and places of honour at banquets. These are the men who swallow the property of widows, while making a show of lengthy prayers. The more severe will be the sentence they receive. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the treasury, and many of the rich put in a great deal. A poor widow came and put in two small coins, the equivalent of a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, I tell you solemnly, this poor widow has put more in than all who have contributed to the treasury. For they have all put in money they had over. But she, from the little she had, has put in everything she possessed, all she had to live on. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Now before you start holding up the widow as the ultimate example of generosity, take another look at where the widow happens to be. She's in the treasury. The key message of this passage can only be found if we keep the two parts of the story as a whole. It's tempting to paint her portrait as possible for us to embody, but that would risk ignoring her true plight. Because it's the in-betweenness of the widow that Jesus sees. She is caught in the middle of systems vying for power, caught in the middle of people desiring power, and she has no power. When you are shaped by powerlessness, you often have little choice but to place your trust, your hope, your very livelihood in authorities who claim to have your best interest at heart. By not separating the verses about the scribes from verses about the widow, Jesus is able to contextualise the widow's contribution against the backdrop of the scribe's attitude, because she is participating in a system that has routinely oppressed her and does so alongside the guise and trappings of piety. The scribes, Jesus tells us, walk about in long robes, greet each other obsequiously in market squares, take the front seats in synagogues and places of honour at banquets, swallow the property of widows, makes a show of lengthy prayers. The widow, Jesus tells us, from the little she had, has put in everything she possessed, all she had to live on. I think Jesus does this deliberately. He not only challenges the scribes, but he also uses their behaviour to reinforce the message of the widow. In the eyes of the scribes, the widow is where she should be, of course, and where they want to keep her, lest they end up being like her. So in a profound way, the widow is acting with nobility and self-sacrifice, while at the same time she is also contributing to an unjust system. She is giving all she has, while she is abetting a system that will take away all she has. The widow's means of practising true piety is, at the same time, a system that is devoid of justice and will in turn exploit her. So Jesus shows us that the might, that is the M-I-G-H-T, of the widow, is to be found in her undivided focus on and trust in God's mighty love for all he needs. And it is great indeed. Is the widow heroic? 
Sure. Is she naive? Maybe. Is she contributing to a system that exploits her? Yes. Can she do otherwise? Maybe not. To be honest, very few of us are in the same position as the widow. We are more inclined to give something after careful calculation and managing the risks. None of us really wants to be the widow, powerless, dependent, destitute. But we do aspire to be the widow of might of the gospel message. The widow's might is God's might, a might known in love, in giving, in grace. So we might ask ourselves, who are the widows in our church and country? And do I care about them? Or where are the scribes in our church and country? And will I confront them?